I, I do like McDonald's coffee. I am also getting paid $400,000 a year by McDonald's Corporation to say that their coffee is the best coffee I've ever had when I'm trying to get a great start on my YouTube career in the morning. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here. Today we are looking at the A6100. This is the successor to the wildly popular Sony A6000, which was like the Camry of cameras. Huge sales, everybody has one, and for good reason. It was a great all-around camera and it is still sold today. But now we have this camera. What does it bring to the table for the entry-level crowd? We're going to find out today. Now the grip on the A6100 is improved in a way. It is larger and if you have bigger hands you might find a little bit more comfortable. I do remember the A6000 had a very small grip and your fingers basically had to point downwards to hold on to it properly. Here you've got a good thumb rest. However, I do find even with my fingers that they're jamming into the front of the body. So it's not super comfortable to hold like this. I'm still going to try to get my fingers down lower but then I don't necessarily have access to the dials the same way that I want to. So you might struggle with that. Now the EVF on this camera and the back screen are improved from the A6000 sort of. I mean in a very minor way. This EVF is still 1.44 million dots. It's basically the same as the A6000. Now the back screen on the A6000 went waist level. This can now do a selfie screen. I mean that is an improvement I guess, but this is below a million dots of resolution on the back LCD. And if you look at the competition, the Canon EOS M50 or the Olympus uh, OMD EM10 Mark III, they have much higher resolution EVFs and better LCD screens as well. One big improvement we do have though on the back LCD screen, it is now a touchscreen interface. The A6000 didn't have that, and yet it's very limited as well. It's one key useful feature that I would say is being able to select your autofocusing point and initiate tracking. That is a really nice feature, but you still can't use it for menu navigation or changing the function screen to be able to do quick tiles, and that just seems like a real letdown, especially when the entry level crowd wants as intuitive a machine as possible. Now one of the things that made the A6000 so popular was for a low price point you got a lot of features. You got a screen that still went waist level, you got the EVF, you got twin control dials, it all felt like a very full featured camera. And so the A6100 has a very similar interface, so it's not that it's any worse, it's just not really improved either. We still have the same two control dials, but you have to use your thumb to manipulate them, so you can't really adjust both at the same time quickly. Uh, you still have very good customizability, and I like that unlike the 6600, we do still have a little pop-up flash here and you can even bend it back with your finger and fire it. Now another thing we still have carried over from the A6000 is the W series battery. Now don't worry, this camera battery did not have great longevity in the past, but this is a more efficient system. We're getting about 420 SEPA rated shots. That's actually not bad and you can still charge it through the USB port. That's a nice touch as well. The menus are still going to be convoluted. It is still a Sony system where it asks a lot of you to remember where the position of those elements was and I highly encourage anybody picking up a Sony camera, get into the menu, find where you can customize your function button tiles and at least get those set up the way you want them. That way hopefully you won't have to go in the menu much at all. Now one of the nice things about the new autofocusing system is not only do you have excellent human eye and face detection, but you can turn on animal eye detection as well. Now frankly I'm not going to use it here. I mean for these squirrels and animals I'm just putting my spot right on the subject, holding down my autofocus and the real-time tracking does work really nicely. Uh, but if you do want to get focus for example on a family pet like a cat or dog where you might really want to get the eyes in shot just to get that kind of classic emotive portrait you can certainly change it over to animal eye detect and it works well and the only complaint I would really say is there's no real fast way to do that in the menu other than set a custom button to be able to switch back and forth quickly. So of course it's a horribly gray day, you can see there's just no color, but look, Jordan gets a nice purple backdrop, at least we get some color in the video. It does remind me though about talking about the A6100's JPEG color engine. It is vastly improved over the A6000, and this is a real point of contention. I mean, I know a lot of people still don't like Sony color today, but it is much improved. The white balance is better, the color rendition is better than those early cameras. Now one thing that the A6100 does well is it still shoots 11 frames 
per second as a top speed. Same as the A6000, and that is really impressive, especially if you want to, you know, get a facial expression or that decisive moment. However, do keep in mind that when you're shooting at that high frame rate, you're not really seeing what's happening real time. You're always seeing basically a slideshow of the last photo that you took, and that means that you're a step behind the game. I do like it though for, you know, trying to get the flag here and just kind of get that one moment where it's, you know, the wind's blowing it and it's pointing out the direction I want. I still far prefer to go down to more of the mid shooting speed, more around six frames per second for children and family and pets. I, I think it's still fast enough and it gives me a good opportunity to be able to track them as they move around the scene. Now, because this is an entry-level camera, I'm endeavoring to use the 16 to 50 kit lens that comes with the camera. This has been around since the very beginning, and honestly, it is largely considered one of the worst kit lenses in the market. It's not particularly sharp, it's not very fast, it is compact, but the power zoom designed to keep it small means that every time I turn this on, I have a delay to wait for it to stick it out, and then I have to zoom it to where I want it to be. It doesn't just stay where I last used it. Let's put this in context, however. If you're gonna use these photos on Instagram or Facebook or just memories that you're going to keep on your computer and look at on a screen, this lens is actually going to be probably just fine. But if you want better image quality, if you want to maybe start printing, putting some photos on the wall, I'd look at some of the awesome aftermarket primes that Sigma and Tamron make. Those are very good and very affordable. And actually, Sony has in recent years improved their APS-C lineup. Otherwise, if you want to stay at the price point that this camera comes at, maybe look at the Canon EOS M50 or the Fuji X-A7. They do have better glass on there as default lenses. Now, another improvement you're gonna see on the A6100 is the new 24 megapixel sensor. Now, of course, it's not new for what we've seen on the market today, but compared to the A6000, it gives substantial improvements in low light. We actually had an opportunity to use the A6100 a while back. We were still in New York City, went out for a little bit of a street shoot with our friends. photo. Well, I machine gunned that one, so I'm sure one will be a focus in charge. All right, so as I said before, compared to an A6000, quite an improvement when it comes to low light performance, but today's standards, it is a very comparable sensor, and I think a lot of people are gonna find it perfectly adequate for their photography. Now for me, by far the biggest selling point to get into any Sony Alpha camera is the new real-time autofocus tracking. The beauty of the Sony system is that it will seamlessly interchange between tracking an object to tracking the face to tracking the eye and then back to the object. It's fantastic for kids running around, pets jumping. It does a very good job. Now that all sounds great, but it comes with a big caveat. First off, Sony does not set this stuff up by default in the camera. We're gonna help you out with that. Put it into AFC where the autofocus will always continuously be focusing. Go into your menu, find the autofocus controls, and go to the very bottom where the tracking options are. Now the first one that you can use is just the wide area tracking. Basically what the camera's gonna do is decide where it wants to focus, usually the closest object, but if a person's face shows up, it will jump right to that subject and go right to the eyes if it can see them. What we prefer to use though for a little bit more control is the flexible spot, the medium sized one. What this means is that I've got a gray focusing point. If it's an inanimate object, it's gonna focus on that, lock on that and track it. If it's a person's face, it will lock on that face and then automatically, if it sees it, choose the face and the eyes. It really is that simple. I like to use auto ISO on pretty much any camera that I'm using, doesn't matter what brand. The idea being that if it gets dark, like it's kind of doing right now, and the camera's starting to get to really slow shutter speeds where I'm gonna get motion blur in my photos, the camera will instead raise the ISO to give me the shutter speed to get sharp pictures. On this particular camera, if you're shooting in bright conditions, it's gonna work fantastic. You're gonna get nice sharp pictures of kids and pets running around. But if you take this camera into low light situations, Unfortunately, you cannot set a minimum shutter speed that you want the camera to maintain. 
Now the downside of this is indoors, you're gonna get shutter speeds that are great for holding a camera steady with a still object, but do absolutely no good when you're trying to freeze your kids and your pets are running around inside the house. I want generally at least 2 50th of a second as my minimum shutter speed to have any chance of freezing them sharp. Sometimes 500th of a second is actually what I prefer. Now on higher end cameras, I can actually choose in the auto ISO function what minimum shutter speed I want the camera to maintain. And if I choose something like 2 50th of a second, the camera will raise the ISO as high as it has to, even if it gets darker, to keep me at that minimum shutter speed. This way I'm guaranteed without having to worry about it or stress about it, that I'm gonna get shots that are frozen sharply. So on this camera, unfortunately, the only workaround that I can think of is set the camera on the top of the mode dial to either shutter priority or full manual, and then set your combination of aperture or shutter speed and make sure that that shutter speed is at least 250 of the second. Now our third tip that we have for you has to do with setting up this camera for video, and Jordan's gonna talk about that next. Hey everyone, it's Jordan being filmed on the A6100 in 4K. And one of the most exciting things about the A6100 is we get very capable tracking autofocus, which is filming me right now, very smooth, very confident. Unfortunately, it is buried in the menus. You have to go into the function of touch operation and choose touch tracking in order to activate that. It's one of the first things you should do if you're planning to shoot video. Otherwise, we're getting beautiful 4K image on it, very similar to the 6466. Unfortunately, you don't get picture profiles though, so you're not gonna get access to log or HLG to expand your dynamic range. You're always gonna get a pretty punchy image out of this camera, but that's great for first timers. Unfortunately, because the lack of in-body image stabilization and the very bad rolling shutter, which is really prone to wobble, I wouldn't use this as a handheld camera a lot, but if you're using it in more controlled situations, it's capable of a very nice, pleasing image. So I know we've been comparing this camera to the A6000 all day long. That is the camera to beat, and really they are essentially still the exact same kind of camera. Pretty good feature set, fairly compact, not a bad price point, but really the 6100's real-time autofocus tracking is the thing that's gonna drive it home. But just like A6000 cameras, if you get into Sony, you're gonna have to take a little bit of time to learn the camera. Look at the Canon EOS M50 or the Fuji X-A7 if you want an even simpler interface. Those can be a good option for you as well. But if I'm looking at a brand new camera and I've got an A6000, even at a really good deal, and then an A6100, I really think having the real-time tracking autofocus, having the better image quality, the better JPEG color, and even getting an upgrade in video is worth that money. So I hope you find this uh, helpful. Maybe that'll steer your direction properly, which way you wanna go. Don't forget, please check out Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us.